Hey guys, Keith here. Yesterday I posted a couple videos that generated some, some PMs to me. Uh, one from Grizzly Glock 1 and one from the Tactical 6 string. Both of them had to deal with uh, rechargeable batteries, so I figured we'd go and do a little quick rundown on rechargeable batteries and basic safety tips. First, I'm going to say that in the world of flashlights, you have two types of batteries. You have primaries, and then your rechargeables. Um, in the primaries you have lithium batteries and alkaline batteries. Uh, you do have a third type of lead acid but chances are you'll never use one of those for a flashlight that's uh, like your car battery is a lead acid battery. So if you are a, a careless person or someone who doesn't really follow safety protocol I would say stay away from the rechargeables and certainly the lithium rechargeables. And, and just go with primaries. Um, reason being is when mistreated the lithium rechargeables have a tendency to vent with flame which uh, is a fancy term for explode and that's not a good thing. Alright so uh, battery types we have your lithium primaries this is a AAA size lithium primary and we have an alkaline primary in the rechargeable field, we have uh, mostly nickel metal hydride now. There is also some nickel cadmium or NICAD batteries. Um, the nickel metal hydride, you'll see NIMH written on them. Now the kind that I like are the kind that come pre-charged. Those are also um, sometimes termed LSD or low self-discharge. And what that means is you can charge them and leave them stored for a while and they won't end up dead. Uh, a non-LSD battery, if you charge it over the course of a month, it'll discharge itself. Over on the lithium side, we have the IMR, which is not a protected battery, and then there's also protected batteries. And I'll get into that in a minute. So, um, one of the questions I got dealt with, is it safe to use a rechargeable battery in a flashlight? And really that depends on the flashlight and the rechargeable battery. Everyone's familiar with the regular alkaline battery, one and a half volts. What you might not know is that the lithium battery, now if this was a AA or AAA, it doesn't matter, it's 1.7 volts. So if you had a flashlight that operated from 0.8 volts to 3 volts and took two batteries, two of these is fine. It gives you three volts. 1.5 plus 1.5 equals three. Two lithium batteries would give you 3.4 volts. 1.7 plus 1.7. That may or may not overpower your flashlight and cause damage. Um, something else to consider with the nickel metal hydride, these are 1.2 volts. So two of them is only 2.8 volts. I'm sorry, 2.4 volts. So it's quite a big difference between the three. Now, the lithiums, these are three volt batteries. This battery, which is the same exact size, and it's marked 3.7 volts, is really a 4.2 volt battery. This battery here is also a 4.2 volt battery. So we need to take that into consideration when we're figuring out if our light can handle it or not. Now this light, this is the Sunway Man V10R, and it is rated for up to 4.2 volts. It's a single cell light. So I could, in theory, safely use one of these rechargeable lithium batteries in it. This HDS Clicky is perfectly suited for lithium primaries, rechargeable lithium batteries. You can get an extension tube and run the 18650. It's quite a versatile light. Now, this Surefire E2D LED Defender runs on two primaries, so that's six volts. It would be safe to assume that it could run on one 4.2 volt battery you would probably get a reduced output and a f definitely reduced runtime. 
but as you can see that um, rechargeable 18650 is the same size lengthwise as two primaries. So really it depends on the flashlight and the batteries you're going to put in it. Like I said, in theory we could use this light with this battery. I wouldn't use it with this these two batteries because that's 4.2 plus 4.2, 8.4 volts, which is 2.4 volts higher than the 6 volts out of the, the two primaries. So, we could safely assume that yes, you can use it. However, it doesn't fit. The 18650 is 18 millimeters in diameter, while the primaries are a hair over 16 millimeters in diameter. The next question I got is what brand do I use? Um, for my nickel metal hydride batteries, my double A's and triple A's, I've been going with Duracells with the white top made in Japan because I couldn't find any loops. And these Medions came with the PowerX charger. Over on the lithium side, I went with AW. And the only reason I went with AW is because they were universally regarded as one of the best battery types or battery manufacturers. Okay, so let's forget about the nickel metal hydrides for a few minutes and focus on the lithiums. The charger that I picked is the PILA P -I -L -A, IBC charger and the reason I bought that was because of its glowing reviews on candle power forums. Um, it charges your 18650s, these are 16430s, RCR 123s, which are the same battery with a protection circuit, so it's 18 millimeters in diameter. And I know I'm getting a little confusing and ahead of myself. These are just two dummy cells, and the way they work is you slot them into the charger so that it's long enough to charge your your smaller battery. Okay, both of these batteries are 4.2 volts when charged. The difference is this holds much more energy. This is, says 2900 milliamps or milliamp hours. These are 550 milliamp hours. This will keep a light running longer than this will. The difference is this is a protected circuit, meaning that it will drain to a point, the protection will kick in and keep it from draining much further. These are unprotected batteries, meaning you can drain them down to their, their empty point, and that actually causes damage to lithium batteries. Another thing, these are IMRs, which have the ability to release much more energy at a given time than this. So same voltage, higher capacity, higher current. So let's move over to the nickel metal hydride batteries. This is the it's a Power X C9000 or Maha C9000. This charges four nickel metal hydride batteries each independently. Nickel metal hydride, unlike lithium, want to be discharged fully. So every few cycles on this, maybe every 30, you drain them completely and charge them back up. Over here on the lithiums, you use them a little bit and top them off whenever you can. This charger, to do a full charge, takes many hours. This charger to do a charge roughly three hours. These batteries get hot, these batteries get warm. So I started the video and I said if you're not safety conscious please don't get into rechargeable batteries. An important thing when you're getting into not necessarily the nickel metal hydrides 
but when you're getting into the lithium batteries you're gonna want to have a multimeter you need to be able to check the voltage of the cell after charging and to determine whether it needs to be charged if your cells get below 3.5 volts there's a chance you've damaged them if your cells get above 4.2 volts there's a chance you've damaged them most failure isn't going to occur when you're using the flashlight that the batteries are installed in it's going to occur when you put it on the charger and set it up to, to go so you need to make sure your charger is placed somewhere where you know the worst can happen it can shoot flames out and hopefully not burn your house down on a cement pad out in the garage is fine um, in a metal trash can you need to do something to make sure that if the worst happens the damage is contained Now you don't want to seal it up because then you create a bomb but you want to be able to make sure that the flames can vent and and limit the damage now the, the vent with flame explosion can happen instantaneously or over a couple minutes I guess probably a couple minutes would be the better so you know the better situation to happen uh, because not as much energy is going to be expended as if it were to just go general safety have a multimeter check your cells after use before charging after charging make sure that you don't go below 3.5 volts or above 4.2 volts you're good to go that about wraps it up. Okay, so the important points to take away from this video. One, as long as you're safety conscious and follow simple steps, rechargeable batteries are relatively safe to use. Lithium batteries, don't overcharge them, don't over discharge them. Nickel metal hydride batteries, pretty much foolproof. Whether you can use a rechargeable battery in your flashlight or not depends on whether it, it will fit and whether the electronics inside will handle it. If the battery, if the flashlight says, you know, operating range up to whatever the, the sum total of your battery power is, you should be good to go. If your flashlight specifically says, go ahead and use IMR 16430s, that's cool. This flashlight is super advanced. It has protection built in. It can detect the, the type of battery you're using and it'll shut down before the, the battery protection circuit kicks in. If the flashlight says do not use rechargeable batteries, do not use rechargeable batteries. And lastly, and it should be obvious and apparent, if you are using a primary, do not recharge it. Uh, worst case scenario it blows up, best case scenario you damage something. Uh, your charger, your battery, your whatever. Okay, so any comments or questions I'd love to hear them. Um, we can get more in depth with a, you know a specific battery. I can show you how to run the, the Power X a little bit more. We can go over the use of the multimeter to check the batteries. We can go over using the multimeter to check the current draw of a flashlight. Whatever you guys want to see, I'll do my best to make it happen. Alright, thanks. Have a great night.